In the past, protecting your DHCP infrastructure against server failure meant implementing split scopes across two DHCP servers. While this worked, it did have some drawbacks, such as the complexity of the setup, as scopes on each server had to be configured manually and required a few additional options to be set. Now, since Windows Server 2012 was released, we've had access to DHCP failover, which greatly simplifies configuration and adds a few new features, such as the ability to configure load balancing. So let's start off by taking a look at our current situation. You can see our current DHCP server here as 192.168.2.33 with two scopes configured, Corporate HQ and Mobile Devices. If we check the properties of these two scopes by right-clicking on them and selecting Properties, we can see that the Failover tab is currently missing as the scope doesn't have Failover configured. Now if we quickly check on our second server, we can see that it currently doesn't have any scopes configured. Now, So in this scenario, we're going to configure DHCP failover with load balancing between our two servers, both of which are in the same physical site. Before we get started, it's important to note that you'll need to remove any split scopes that may have been set up before configuring DHCP failover. So with that out of the way, let's get our DHCP failover configured on these two scopes. Now as so we're going to configure all of our DHCP scopes with the same setting, We'll start by right-clicking on IPv4 on our first DHCP server and select Configure Failover. This launches the Configure Failover wizard. Now if we wanted to configure the scopes with different options, we would simply select the individual scope that we wanted to configure. On the introduction screen, we're asked to select which scopes we want to configure. Now as we're configuring all of them, we'll leave the Select All checkbox selected and then click Next. The first thing we need to do is specify the failover partner. So we'll enter the IP address of our newly provisioned DHCP server, 192.168.2.34, and click Next. Now this is where we'll configure the bulk of our settings for the failover relationship. We'll start with the relationship name. I think we'll give it a more human-readable name. DHCP01 to DHCP02. We'll leave the maximum client lead time at the default. Amongst other things, this is the length of time a DHCP server waits before assuming full control of the scope after detecting that its failover partner is offline. Under Mode, we can select either Load Balance or Hot Standby. Now we'd use Hot Standby in a more traditional role where the partner server is at a different physical location, such as a disaster recovery site. As our DHCP servers are co-located, we're going to stick with Load Balance. Now as our DHCP servers are equally matched in terms of performance, we'll leave the load balance percentage at 50-50. We'll select State Switchover Interval and leave it at 60 minutes, so that if either server can't contact its partner server for more than an hour, it'll place the partner server in a down state. If you leave this checkbox blank, we would have to do this manually. Now I don't know about you, but I didn't get into IT so that I could manually monitor everything. Now finally, We'll leave the Enable Message Authentication selected and enter a shared secret. So with all of the options configured, we can click Next. We'll quickly review our settings and then click Finish to complete the configuration. Looks like everything was successful, so we can click Close and verify our failover configuration. So if we click on IPv4 on our partner server and then hit Refresh, we can see that the replicated scopes now appear. Going back to our original server, we'll right click on the Corporate HQ scope and select Properties. Here we can see that the Failover tab is now available. Clicking on the Failover tab confirms the settings that we set just a few moments ago. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.